When designing a logic circuit, we're usually given some form of description or specification of how the circuit should work. Uh, and then from this specification, we can create a truth table for the circuit, we can create a Boolean expression, and then design the actual logic circuit implementation, so the actual hardware design of the circuit. So we're going to look at an example here, an example design problem. We need to design a logic circuit to control a motion sensor security light, so the kind of thing you get in your garden or in your garage. So there's a digital motion sensor. So this is a thing that actually you know, detects movement in the garden. So that light put a zero when nothing's detected or a one when something's detected. There's also a digital ambient light sensor because we only want this, you know, we only want the light to come on in the evening when it's dark. So the light sensor, that light put a zero when it's dark and one when it's light. And then we want the scooter light to activate if it's dark and something is detected. But as well, you might want to turn it on and off manually as well, in case you've got a party or something like that. So we're going to have a manual override switch so we can turn on the security light. So if the switch is a zero, it'll be off. And the switch is a one, the light will be on. So that's the kind of plot diagram of this system. We've got our three outputs. So we've got a digital motion sensor, a digital light sensor, and a manual override switch. They're going to be fed into a combination of logic circuit that um, we're going to design. And the output will control will control the actual light itself. So now we've got three inputs to the system. So we have eight possible input combinations we've seen before. We have two to the power of three gives us the eight possible input combinations. We'll call input A the motion sensor, B the light sensor, and C the manual override switch. So there's only going to be one output, and that's the output what's fed into the kind of bulb. And then in terms of the output, we'll say when the output is zero, the light's off. And when it's one, the light is on. So we can go through and we can create a truth table from this design problem. So we know the light's going to be on. So we know the output is um, going to be one when the manual override switch is activated. So that's when C is one. So every time in this truth table, C is a one, we know then that the output is definitely going to be on because we've kind of manually turned on the light. And again, the light's also going to be on now when it's dark and something is detected. So it's dark when B is zero and something's detected when A is one. So we need to look through all the cases where B is zero and A is one. You can see that happens here. So this case a is a one and b is zero so we know then the light is going to be on so we get a one here in all other cases the lights off so from that design problem we've created the truth table this has just got our three inputs so we've just gone through and created our eight different input combinations and we just looked at the situations where we got a one on the eight foot Now, from this truth table, we're going to show how to get a Boolean expression. So we need to first talk about what we call min terms. So each row in a truth table is represented by what we call a min term. So this is a product that each of the input variables appears once. And this verb can either be complemented or uncomplemented. So when, when we talk about complemented, we mean that it's inverted or uncomplemented when it's not inverted. So in this, so if we go through each of these rows, so you see this, the first row, so A is zero, B is zero, and all is, and C is zero. So all three inputs are zero. So that means in the min term, all three of them will be complemented. So we got the bar over the top. And in the second row, only A and B are zero. So that means in this expression here, only A and B have got the bar on. So it's just the case, we're just going through, and then every time we see a zero, we just put a bar over the top. So we've always got, each min term is always A dot B dot C, and then when we get a zero, when we've got a zero, 
we just put the bar over the top. So these gives us a min term. You know, that gives us the min term for each row. And then from these min terms and the truth table, we can create what's called a sum of products expression. So this is our output. So this is our output Y for the security system. If we just look at the case where we got a one for the output and then we just get the corresponding min term. So all the, all the times I got one in the output, we just got those min terms. And we're just gonna, each one of them is a product. So with an and, because we know these dots here represent an and function. So that's a three input uh, and function. So and does Boolean multiplication, so that's a product. And then we're actually gonna feed all those together into an or, fun into an or gate. And we know or does binary addition. So that's the sum. So here we've got a sum of products. So with a truth table, every time there's a one, we get the min term and we just all them together. So each of these terms here just represents the one in the eight put column. So this is called a sum of products expression. And every, every truth table can be represented by a sum of products expression. Now you can see this is actually quite a complicated expression here. We've got quite a few different gates there. So we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six not gates to invert those inputs. We've got one, two, three. We've got, um, you know, the, the all gates to uh, sum all those together. And for each of the terms itself, we're going to need the AND gates as well. So that's a complicated expression. It's going to need lots of gates to implement it. So that's why later we're going to, when we cover Boolean algebra, we use Boolean algebra to simplify this. And we'll see it's actually possible to simplify that expression using the laws of Boolean algebra and get this simplified expression. So using the laws of Boolean algebra, we can simplify this complicated one we can obtain this. It's actually, for simple design problems like this, you can actually get this simplified expression directly from the design problem. So in this case, it's saying the output will be a one when the manual, when the manual override switch is on, or it's dark and something is detected. So from the design statement itself, you can often just come up with the expression directly, but if it's not possible, you create your truth table, you get your sum of products expression and you simplify using Boolean algebra. Now you can see that the sum of products expression could be quite long handed to write down. So you can also write it in what's known as canonical form. So each of the min terms we came across before is just given a number. And we'll see later in the, the course that these numbers are essentially just binary. So Zero, zero, zero in binary is just zero in decimal. And then for example, one, one, zero, we'll see later. One, 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 zero in binary is six in decimal. So each of these min terms, depending on this pattern here, that was, that's just a binary value. And each min term is just labeled by its decimal equivalent. So that, so this is min term zero, that's min term one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So now we know the numbers for each min term. We just have, it's just a case of looking where we've got a one in the eight put column. So we've got one here. So that's min term one. And then we've got a one here. Gives us a min term three. Same there, four, five, seven. So to write a SOP expression in canonical form, you just get the number of the min term and use that to label it. So it's much easier, you know, more shorthand, if you will, to write that out than these more complicated Boolean expressions we saw before. So once you've got your simplified expression, so we know, um, we know that's our circuit expression, we can just build the circuit then. So we've got A and not B. 
So we know we need an AND gate to implement this part here. So we've got our AND gate, we've got A. We know we need not to get not B. We'll have to use a NOT gate to invert B. Then this then is odd with this with C as well. So at this point here now in the circle we've got A and not B. That's going to be C. That will give a final expression. Y equals A and not B or C.